This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. This is probably the fifth, sixth, or seventh, or potato time that we are trying to record this goddamn thing. At I least five. Host. At least five. There you go. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-hosts are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hello. They're finally getting this going. Fuck you, Skype. Fuck you, Callgraph. Fuck you, Alaska. Fuck, fuck. I, I can't blame anything on Holly's side this time. <laughs> you can apparently blame your elbow, though. Yeah, I can blame my elbow. Why am I blaming my elbow? Because you bumped the not record button or something the last time, or how did that work? No, no, Callgraph decided, oh, I'm not gonna record! Okay. Yeah, it, it, it has basically been call graph. Oh, I'm still blaming your elbow. There we go. We can blame my elbow. I'll blame both my elbows. Fuck you, elbows. Okay. People's elbows. Yes. Fuck the people's elbow. Uh, so, yeah. Been two weeks because of scheduling issues. And then... Oh, lordy. <laughs> but but I'm, glad, I'm glad we're back. We are finally back. We are finally here. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you two been in the past two weeks? Oh, good. yeah, been doing all right. Was at my friend's wedding down in California. Uh, got sick on the way back, but been feeling better. Getting ready to go do some musical theater here in a few days. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, God, I, I want to do another musical at some point. That would, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, Pixie's coming home today, so that's exciting. Yeah, oh, she good. has a little bald spot from radiation, so that'll be super cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh god. So, so this this particular episode, both of both of the articles that we talked about and discussed and decided to pull on here, comes from uh, Pathios.com, the uh, friendly atheist blog. Uh, if you don't follow him, go follow him. He even has his own podcast, Friendly Atheist Podcast. You can find it on iTunes. It's, he's, you know, he's a really cool guy, very friendly, and, well, friendly atheist, of course. Um, you know, very, very cool guy. And, and the author's name is uh, Hemant, Men Hemant Mehta, by the way. I, I think I'm saying that right. He, he, obviously, you listen to the show, you'll get the pr proper pronunciation. Anyway, anyway, both of these stories come from his blog over on patheos.com. And the first one that we found we really want to talk about, especially since this is still ongoing, still very, very important. Uh, Jefferson County School Board in Colorado wants to revise the AP U.S. History curriculum with the help of Christians. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, because that's not ominous at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 one it's one thing to, to make a claim, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, they want to revise, you know, a, a, a curriculum with the help of Christians. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, they, they might be you know, understanding and at least be like, well, let's actually fairly accurately represent history. But then again, you know, yeah. with the way things are going, especially like in other places like Texas, it's not a comforting idea. No, it is not. I'm reminded of like this one family guy gag where, where uh, Peter was watching Cosmos for rednecks or whatever. And the Cosmos was created by God. Mm hmm. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, so, last year, three conservatives won seats on the Jefferson County Board of Education in Colorado, giving them a majority on the five-member board. Oh, dear. The community is now seeing the awful results of that election because the board wants to rethink advanced placement U.S. history curriculum to make sure it's being taught, quote-unquote, properly. Which is to say they don't want to stress the things that make our country look awful. You know, like slavery and the fact that we... You know, kind of put Japanese Americans into their own sort of camps during World War Two. Um, you know, they don't want. Or you know, or you know, going back to the slavery thing. You know, the founding fathers that you know so many conservatives like to hold up as paragons of virtue. You know, they they owned slaves too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what was it? Thomas Jefferson not only owned slaves, but like he reproduced through one of them, at least oh, one yeah. of them. So he was like he was a horny motherfucker. I don't know how true that is, but I'm sure he probably you know did some things with his slaves, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure most slave owners... Oh, well, I say most. At least some. Some slave owners, yeah, they, they boinked their slaves. Or, at this point, it wouldn't necessarily be boinked. They probably raped them. 
Yeah. So let's let's mm. call a spade a spade here. You know. Yeah. Uh, earlier this week, students led a protest over this rewriting and whitewashing of our own history. Hundreds of students walked out of classrooms around suburban Denver on Tuesday in protest over a conservative-led school board proposal to focus history education on topics that promote citizenship, patriotism, and respect for authority in a show of civil disobedience that the new standards would aim to downplay. The school board proposal that triggered the walkouts in Jefferson County calls for instructional materials that would present positive aspects of the nation and its heritage. It would establish a committee to regularly review texts and course plans, starting with advanced placement history, to make sure materials promote citizenship, patriotism, essentials and benefits of, fr of the free market system, respect for authority, and respect for individual rights, and don't encourage or condone civil disorder, social strife, or disregard of the law. You know... Civil disorder, you know, how yeah. things get done in this country. Yeah, basically the only way that change can can actually be effectively yeah. made in this country. Yeah. So I was like, we don't we don't want to encourage that because we don't want change. We're afraid of change. So nobody can change. Nobody. Nobody can do it. I don't know. Let's no, ignore stuff. our past and, you know, just hope that we don't repeat it. Yeah. yeah. We'll just... Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it, I think is how the phrase goes. Yeah. Fingers right. crossed, guys. <laughs> yeah, fingers, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah. I, I actually saw a really good um, – somebody posted on Tumblr. It was like a, um, a warning that Warner Brothers placed before some of their old, uh, you know, Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. For the, you know, the cartoons that were, like – that clearly had racist uh, caricatures and stereotypes, and they said, like – the cartoons that you're about to see are, you know, have racist stereotypes. It was wrong to use them at, back then. It's wrong as as it's as wrong to use them back then as it is today. But still, we're airing them unedited so that you can see what those stereotypes were like. Because to pretend, you know, because to not show them would be to pretend that those prejudices never even existed. Exactly, yeah. and they they did it right. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I have yet to see Disney do something like that though. <clears throat> well. Yeah. That's, it's important that you bring that up because they're remaking Dumbo and there's a huge deal about, you know, are the crows going to be in, in the new Dumbo? In a way, racist connotations aside, I would almost hope so. Because, again, racist connotations aside, they could be kind of funny. Well, they are actually important to the story. They teach him how to fly. There is so. that. There is it's that. like, what are you going to, like, are you going to just change it to some other kind of bird? I mean, I guess you could do that, but. Yeah. So yeah. Then I mean, it's but like, that... you still run the risk of black people turning around and saying, well, now you're just removing the black characters from this film. Yeah. Right. It's... And all you would really have to do is just kind of tone down the stereotype a bit because, yeah, yeah like you said, the, you know, the, the crows in, in that movie aren't just there for, you know, backdrop comic relief and, oh, hey, Lodi, it's such a big, it's such a big head elephant. You know, like, that's, it's like, no, they actually go down to it and they teach him, yeah, how to fly and they encourage him and they, it's just like, they're awesome. They're cool yeah. characters. Yeah. And maybe they're a little overly stereotypical, especially for the time period, but yeah, just tone that down a bit and you'll probably be good. But yeah, like they're the nice guys in the film. They're they're helpful. So it's like, you know, I think it would be um, actually harmful to the film to, you know, fundamentally change who those characters are. Oh yeah, and... because it's like here are these. You know, you're talking about a group that is being stereotyped, who is you know, uh, living through you know people being bigots and prejudiced against them every day mm -hmm. and that's essentially what dumbo is going through right you know all of the other elephants have shunned him you're different you're no good and the crows come along and say oh false mm -hmm. yeah and your big ears make... you're awesome and you own that so yeah, your big ears make you who you are so you know use them use them to your advantage damn straight uh, so to continue on, uh, given that the AP U.S. history curriculum, like all AP courses, is standardized, not teaching children everything they're required to know would only hurt them in the long run. Not only has the College Board, which runs all AP courses, spoken out against the Jefferson County School what what the Jefferson County School Board is doing, they've warned them that if the curriculum is altered much, they risk losing the AP designation. That means students may miss out on college credit for the courses, which is basically the whole point of taking them. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, and and you know what? I actually kind of like the idea just, you know, across the board, this whole standardization of what kids need to learn in schools, like a national, you know, a national standard. You know, people who are like, oh, you learned this in Florida or this in Alabama or whatever. No. I mean, and at least at I'm least sorry, but basics. I have to make a joke here. OK, are, go ahead. Are, are, are you saying that you're supporting No Child Left Behind um... in, in Common Core? <laughs> at least a little bit, I guess. Okay. But at least a little bit, I guess. Uh, I like the ideals behind behind them. Mm-hmm. They could use some major work. Uh, yeah. So. But the ideas are good. It's the execution might be a little sloppy. Uh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the idea of you know saying like, okay, well, here's you know a certain you know period of you know your history class you need to teach. Here's a certain section of the mathematics that you need to teach, and you know. Blah, 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 everything else you can kind of, you know, do it, but you have to make sure that they're aware of these things. Yeah. And 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 that and something that actually just popped into me, I'm thinking, okay, what if somebody is slower or faster? Well, then you teach them at those particular levels. You know, you keep them at that particular level until they get it. Or if they're going too far ahead, you punt them up ahead, as long as they understand everything that comes before it. You know, yeah, but mm-hmm. but every but as long as they understand everything that they need to know by the time they graduate high school, at the bare minimum, then you should be okay. I would think, yeah. and if they you don't, would, they would keep them longer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean that, that's 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 just me. And again, you know, this kind of off the cuff kind of thing. I hadn't I had no idea I would be going into that direction today. So because <laughs> I was thinking more of you know kind of the more religious aspects. Because religious and conservatism and all that. Um, it's not like there isn't already a committee to review the course, by the way. The problem is that it's not as ideologically conservative as the board majority wants. Jefferson County's Resource Review Committee, formed in 1997, is to include a balance of citizens and educators selected by the chief academic officer or designee and district leadership. Williams' proposal differs in that the board would appoint members. In other words, the committee already has citizens and academics who know what they're talking about, but the board wants to add members to that committee who can steer the d- discussion in a more Jesus-y direction. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, don't believe me? Last week, at the board's regular meeting, a citizen pointed out that Will- Williams had been sent out an email to her friends saying that she needed people to be part of the committee. One of those friends, clearly understanding the unwritten language in Williams' message, sent out another email urging Christians and conservatives to apply for the committee because we must have more conservative members on this committee than progressives and liberals. Please help Julie fill the committee with godly people. Yeah, because progressives and liberals are never godly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Spoiler alert, I am dating a a, a more progressive and liberal Christian. Just, Just saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the, he's got a sound clip of the relevant portion of the board meeting, which you, know, you can you can hear when you actually go and check it out for yourself, which I do encourage. Um, and it looks like this is part of it. Dear friends, this is a door that many of us have been praying for. See Julie's note below. If you know anyone who is a who is conservative and or a Christian who can serve on this committee to be watchmen for history curriculum, please pass this along to them. We must have more conservative members on this committee than progressives and liberals. Please help Julie fill the committee with godly people. With basically what you, you know, Barbara yeah. just said there. Yeah. Because yeah, we we can't have these liberals actually teaching proper history. No, we got to teach them the way that we want them to see it. The more godly, because we never had slaves, and if we did, the slaves were happy. And we well, this is a public school, right? This is yeah. a public school. This is a yeah. yeah. So this is like if you are really concerned about your child getting a godly education, send them to parochial school. Yeah, yeah. Like or... that. That is your choice as an adult, but you cannot, you cannot force a public school district, which is run by the government, to. Mm-hmm make the decisions more godly for you exactly yeah or you know just homeschool your kids if you're that concerned about giving them a godly education yeah and you know if if you don't think well i i I have things i need to do okay well then 
find school for them. Find the school for them that will, you know, teach them what you want. And and honestly, like, just if you're that concerned and you have to send them to public school, you have no other option. Just, just I don't know. God, <laughs> maybe you're Be just parents. shit out of luck. Be parents. Yeah. T- talk to your kids. Yeah. That actually, you know, it can work. Z-O-M-G. Communication. Oh, my. Uh. That's one of those things about about parents and the way they treat schools that I find endlessly frustrating. You know, I have a lot of friends who are teachers. And, you know, yes, teachers are there to, you know, teach your kids. But guess what? That's also your job as a parent. You cannot depend on schools to teach your child everything you want them to know. And that's the important difference. It's, you know... If something is being taught in a way that you don't agree with, that's it, fine. Yeah. And, but you know, unless it is factually inaccurate, um, you know, it, too fucking bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. And this is if this is purely a moral issue, then it is your job as a parent to be the parent. Yeah. Moral comes from the parent. Guide the right. guide the you know, guide your offspring along until they reach the age of reason, and then they decide for themselves. Some parents well, don't necessarily like what the kids may decide when they reach the age of reason, but hopefully you've been a good enough parent to them, to where they can make their decision with a sound mind, a clear head, and and all of the facts that they are able to get their hands on at the time. Yeah, and, and and don't even try and tell me, oh, but we just want to try and teach the controversy, like when, when trying to introduce a debate between religion, or no, uh, like evolution and, you know, creationism. It's like, don't you even fucking go there, you shitbag. Like, there is no controversy. There is no serious controversy about that. Yeah. It's only, like, the, the small, tiny fraction of Christians who are so goddamn vocal about this that they cannot let it go, and they have to to get it taught in schools and if they can't actually get intelligent design which is just creationism in a scientific you know bow if they can't get that taught in schools then we'll try and teach the controversy because there is one there totally is one that we didn't make up at all right that that's about as much of a controversy as, as you know as oh god I, ca- I can't even make one up off the top of my head it's just that it, it's just, just that insane uh, but you bring up the creationism We've all seen this happen before. Just a few years ago in Texas, the state school board became a laughingstock of the nation when Christian conservatives wanted schools to teach creationism and the idea that we're created as a Christian nation. One of the advisors they brought on board to help them out was pseudo-historian David Barton. I I almost want to say that on some episode of Thespian Talk, we probably talked about it. We did talk about this. Oh, it was, yeah. it was an episode that I was on, in fact. Oh, yeah. See? <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is something we definitely covered back in the day. Oh, God. No pun intended. <laughs> and and no, Gonzo, it's... but at best, you know, you know there, there is no controversy. And, and and for anybody who wants to try and, and just push it in any way, it is not science. If it starts right. with I believe or if you get your information from the Bible to try and push in a science class, that is not science. That is religion. Yeah, it it's goes religion. Elsewhere. Well, in this case, we're talking about history, but yeah, it's still also not accurate history. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's, because – It was not you, founded as a Christian nation, and any actually, religious scholar in the world will tell you that. Yeah, no. Right. Even if you – like. If you're if you're trying to say like you know guys like the founding fathers lived you know all these years ago you know they were slave owners they had different morals maybe you know we shouldn't take every single thing that they said at face value it's still fairly indisputable that they were like we're not founding this as an explicitly Christian nation whatever our beliefs might be we're keeping this an open society so that there's no squabbling petty squabbling you know going on like you know the so that you know the the this faction of Christians and this faction of Christians don't spend countless hours in you know in Congress fighting each other over like the specific language of of something, which we still do, but you know now it's not focused entirely on which faction of Christianity is the most good 
Yeah, instead, it's Christianity is the best. Everybody else can just go to hell. <laughs> well, Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, let's see. What was it? The fifties that they put in God we trust in the pledge and on the money and everything, or it might have been before that for the money, but definitely the pledge was in God we trust in the fifties. I think it was. Yeah, it was like I think it. I think coins were earlier, like maybe the the eighteen hundreds, but paper money wasn't until the fifties, and that was in response yeah. to the Red Scare. Mm-hmm. Because we gotta show we're better, and what way to show we're better than you know, say that no. yeah, say that we're part of a religion that has historically killed people because they believe that their god had a bigger dick. <laughs> right. What's a better way to show that we're better people than being like, oh, you godless heathens? Yeah, <laughs> because that's yes, how it works. Yeah, Colorado and Jefferson County doesn't need that. It was bad enough the first time. The board needs to vote against Williams's proposal, and parents, teachers, and students need to pressure them until they do so. On a side note, you should check out the brilliant hashtag Jeff Ca- Jeffco School Board History on uh, Twitter. It's hilarious, apparently. Um, in fact, I've, he's got the link here. I'm going to look it up. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. For just the first four that I've got up here. Um, let's see, like the U.S. did with slavery, Poland voluntarily ended its border with Germany in 1939. Uh, let's see, Colorado's conservative history is just a a uh, link there I'm not going to get into. Um, we're moving to Jeff County School Board history story and Colorado Board's attempt to whitewash American history. Uh, again, that's not really anything there. But that first one, voluntarily ended. I, th- I think that, yeah – U.S. That was one thing that that did leap out at me. That's leaping back out at me now. This, they're saying that the U.S. voluntarily ended slavery. I'm sorry, but if you voluntarily end <laughs> slavery, it does not involve four or five years of fucking bloodbaths. Yeah. No, it doesn't involve a war between your own countrymen. Yeah, it's just <laughs> and dragging every poor sucker and and literally poor sucker into this to fight for your fucking ideals. Yeah, pitting brother against brother, all that shit. Yeah, that doesn't happen if you go willingly along with something. Yeah, and you know what? Both sides, both the Union and the Confederates, were, were kind of guilty of it. Because it, it's just the Confederates, they just wanted their rights to do what they want. And the Union is like, no, we, we need we need to do this, we need to do this. And the, the Confederates are like, fuck you, we're seceding. And, and the Federals yeah, are like, like, fuck you. It's... Yeah, it was like the the union was like we need to we need to work together to you know pool our resources and keep things going. And then the then the Confederacy was like, no, we're we're not gonna work with you. We've got everything we need. We're gonna form our own country. So fuck off. And then the union was like, okay, I guess we need to rally our 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 calls against something. Uh, they're 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 slave owners. Yeah, they have the slaves. Yeah. yeah. It was not started strictly because of slaves, you know, because of slavery. Yeah, the the Union states, the one the ones that we typically see as the Union states, they they did they had abolished slavery, you know, because they have more efficient and better methods for getting work. They were developing machines, and if the South had worked with them, then maybe the South would have gotten more of those machines as well, and relied less and less on those slaves, and 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 be actually be oh he holy shit. History, you know, you know, it repeats itself. You got a whole bunch of crusty white motherfuckers who are afraid of change, and and mm-hmm. it's driving the country to to breaking point after breaking point after breaking point. See, we're not learning from our fucking history. <laughs> God damn yeah. it! Yeah, ah! and and that's just gonna keep on happening if these people have their way. Yeah, uh, which means you know what? It is midterm elections this year. If if you're listening to this, you are a liberal and you have the ability to vote. Go do it. Well, seriously, obviously, obviously, but you know, yeah, if you have the ability, go do it. Yeah, and, I honestly think midterm elections or or just inter and just like local congressional elections are probably the most important thing that we as a people have. I know a lot, you know, there's a lot of cynicism and negativity when it comes to voting. It's like, oh, when I vote, it's not going to make any kind of difference because whatever the system's rigged, the people in power are have control everything, or it's just I live in a yeah, I don't live in a swing state, so obviously my votes, my my votes, not gonna you know really matter too much one way or the other. Still, get out and vote for your congressman. Yeah, definitely. For your congressman, your 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 senators, your your representatives, the people, your governors, just people who are going to directly be representing you because you can choose those people. Yes, and you have a 
Yeah, you have a say in, how, in who is elected there. Yeah, and, and honestly, the, the system is not as rigged as people may think. The only way it seems rigged is because the people we don't want to see in power end up getting in power, and they do that through fear-mongering. Yes. And, and making people So many scared. attack ads. <sighs> I agree, I, though. I think it is the most important time to vote. And, and, you know, people are like, but I'm not voting for the president, so does it really matter? It actually matters more. And just as an example, so you can understand how great of an, an effect that it has, look at the things that President Obama has wanted to do versus the Congress he's had to work with. Yeah, when, you, mm. when you've got a president who's trying to push through all these things that are going to help the country, especially in the long run, and you've got a bunch of crusty white motherfuckers shaking their heads like they're fucking children going, nope, 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 I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. like if you do that, if, you, if they were four-year-olds and, and, and they were doing that, they'd probably get put in time out or get spanked or something, however, however you discipline your kids, you know. You know, obviously, you know, but yeah. still, they, they would be punished for it. Yeah, it just kind of reminds me of, like, the, you know, the, the kid in, like, the, the checkout aisle who all of a sudden, just because he doesn't get the candy that he wanted, just starts, like, tearing down the, you know, the, the kiosk and, like, screaming, pounding fists on the floor, just like, fucking whatever! Yeah. I'm just shutting this whole thing down now. Yeah, almost like... Kind of reminds me of one of those all um, – oh, God, I don't remember what country it came from, but it was like a condom commercial where was this guy that looked oh, like Seth Green right. walking in the walking into the thing and the kid's just trying to do the thing and, and it's just uh, – like, yeah, oh. yeah, it starts screaming, throwing crap everywhere, and then at the end just use condoms. Yeah. And, <laughs> yes, we, we – we, when it comes to our governance, we need to put on that protection and – it prevent, you know, large babies like the old crusty old white motherfuckers that are currently in Congress. You know, we just need to do that. Uh, especially when those crusty old white motherfuckers, they're acting like children because, you know, people who are paying them. And you know they're, they're not just getting taxpayer money. They're getting money from corporations and everything. So, of course, they're, they're going to do what they say because that's where the money goes because, you know, money is more important than anything else. Money is more important. Yeah, I'm, I'm rambling on. I'm sounding a little bit bitter. We're going to go to Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did I mention I can ramble? I can really ramble. <laughs> okay, so the other one, again, it's on Patheos, Friendly Atheist blog. Uh, Tennessee Department of Children's Services Commissioner says religion is the only foolproof form of rehabilitation. Bullshit! Mm, I can yeah. already say it. <laughs> <laughs> you may have heard about how 32 teenage teenagers escaped from the Tennessee Department of Children's Services Woodland Hills Youth Development Center last week. Wow, that's a mouthful of a title. Okay, most of them are back in custody, but the community wants answers. Why did it take so long for officials to contact the police about the escape? What are they going to do to prevent this in the future? This week, DCS leaders held a community meeting to try and answer some of those questions. But I want to draw special attention to comments made by DCS Interim Commissioner Jim Henry. Henry also pleaded with the community for their help. In a number of ways, Henry told the crowd that education is the way out of the situations that many youth in the juvenile system come from. I can agree with that. You know, mm -hmm. it helps. He also urged Tennessee's numerous churches to produce more foster families. Henry added that we need more church services and that in his experience, a conversion to a religion was the only thing that truly rehabilitated people behind bars. Bullshit. Yeah. Smells like it. Yeah. Looks like it. I mean, Probably. I've got a family member. Who, who spent time in prison because, well, he was, um, you, 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 you I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to be around the bush. He liked to play with little kids in the wrong way. Um, oh. And yeah. he supposedly found religion again. And even before then, he had found religion over and over and over again, claiming he was a good Christian and everything. But yet he went and got, went and diddled little children. Religion didn't do shit for him. Yeah, well, 
it always bothers me that people are like, well, I found religion, so I'm all better now. Except for, you know, for most of these people, when they say they found religion, they mean they found Christianity, which means they found a religion that is okay with the fact that they fuck up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, in what, like, how on earth am I supposed to believe that that makes you any better? Like, what you say now is that, I'm all better because it's okay if I make mistakes. Yeah, I mean, and you know what? Depending on the size of the mistake, I don't care what religion you are. Or or bad choices, yeah. you know, depending on the, the situation. Yeah, mistakes, yeah. doesn't matter what your religion is or lack of religion is. As long as they're not like catastrophic mistakes or whatever, fine. You know, yeah. you know, you accidentally, you accidentally gra grab the blue cup instead of the white cup. Okay, that that's fine. You know... You you go and diddle a little child. That's not good. That's not no. a mistake. No, that's yeah. not a mistake. That's a choice that you made. A mistake is doing something like accidentally dropping, you know, a plate or, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like accidentally something dropping that... like a, pl a plate on somebody or, you know, something and like breaking like their 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 toe or something and that 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 that's a fuck up that that other thing is not a fuck up that was a no it's just decision. fucked up it's yeah. fucked up yeah <laughs> definitely definitely and in the rest of the article there's not much left in this article but he's basically saying the same thing we are saying he was like yeah religion has never kept people from going to prison not a magical potion that'll keep them from going back in it's the difference between faith as an automatic solution and dedicating your life to a worthwhile cause which may include religion and he agrees that henry is right about education you know, and then mm -hmm. that's fine. We can give him that credit. But if religious if religious conversion is the only proof, foolproof elixir he's ever seen, then um, I, I'm agreeing with Hemant here. I have serious concerns about his ability to manage the DCS. Yeah, he yeah. also says, uh, he's like, Henry's right about education. I imagine even more so when we're talking about teenagers. But teaching those kids useful skills that will enable them to get jobs when they leave prison also helps. Mm -hmm. That would help, too. But no, no, just just give them a Bible and they're they're golden. That they, they they've got all the answers now. Yeah. So oh, so that was that was the two we had brought up. I'm actually gonna pull another one out of again out of the same well, place. Well, I want to go back actually because okay, this you is go go ahead. Constructive deconstruction. I actually want to go back to a point that you were making when we were talking about schools. Right. Go ahead. And about how it, as long as you graduate and you know the things that you need to know, that should be important. Uh, to me, that brings up a very important point about the fact that we do sort of shove kids through school and that the way we treat kids in school isn't based on your ability, but it's based on your age. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a problem. Like, I understand, you know, trying to generally keep kids within their peer groups, but that can be flexible by a couple years. Oh, yeah. So let's stop making schools about how old you are. You know, just because you're 10 doesn't mean that you should necessarily be in the fourth grade. Yeah, in fact, I think even one of the kids that lives here, I think he's going through his grade. I know he went through one grade twice. I don't remember if it's this year's the second year in a grade or if it was the previous year that he had to repeat. But, you know, he's had to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and he's doing it until he gets it right. And, you know, that is that is a good thing. That's a good plan. You know, keep at it until you get it right. You know, don't just yeah. shove him like... You know, like if you're 15, don't shove them in high school or whatever. You know, don't do that Un unless they can actually prove that they are capable of getting to that level if they understand everything grade 8 and below. Right. Well, and that's that's some of the problem that we have because it's like, you know, then teachers give pity grades. Well, I don't want to be the one teacher that, you know, makes this kid not continue on with the rest of his you know, friends and the people in his age group. So it's like, let's just stop segregating our children by age and look at what they can actually do. When yeah. my older sister was going into school, um, she was the youngest in her grade. Right. And mm -hmm. there was some debate on whether or not they would let my sister into school at the time. Um, she was born exactly a month, I think, before the cutoff. Date. Okay. She just right. happened to be the youngest in the class. Um, and they were talking about, you know, they didn't, they didn't know if it was going to be appropriate or not. My sister was the valedictor valedictorian of her class. Hmm. 
So yeah, it's and- like, you, you guys were concerned about her age, and she's smarter than everyone else there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, age does not a smart person make. I mean, you gain a little more experience if you're older, but that doesn't mean that you're smarter than anybody else. I mean, I know kids in high school who are so just, you know, so smart, so knowledgeable about so many things, and, you know, a lot of it's independent study because they're just naturally curious. And I just think to myself, it's like, God, when I was in high school, I mean, I was curious about things, but these kids are, like, fucking geniuses. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, God, was it, uh, one of, oh, God, I know there was, like, a, a, a few teenagers recently, uh, they, they had made some kind of breakthrough or something. Uh, I, I can't even remember it. God damn it. Uh, it, it'll, well, it'll come to one of us, I'm sure. Even a few months ago, I was talking about the, the kid on Kickstarter who I saw who had, you know, made some sort of dice for gaming and it was like his second or third kickstarter project he's 17 yeah jeez i'm <laughs> like there's no way at 17 that i would have been doing that i don't think i would have even i don't think anybody i went to school with would have and and that's not it's not necessarily a dig at everybody i went to school with it's just because we, we did have some very very determined and driven individuals i just don't think they would have been able to do something like that mm-hmm. it's just wow yeah well, and that's why I support things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And I'm, you know, saying let's not segregate our children by age because look at, you know, when we take away those limitations of, well, you're just a kid, you don't know any better. Look at what these kids can do. Right. Right. And yeah, no, it, this that's, yeah, that's true. Um, switching uh, back, I just want to switch back to this, uh, this, other, this other article we are reading. Um, about religion, and uh, this is sort of a yeah, subject change, but I just wanted to, to make this point because I think it's fairly pertinent. Um, I think the one, what maybe what, the, what these guys are trying to get at with the whole religion being the cure for delinquency, whatever, is that, from what I can understand, uh, from my perspective as a non-religious person, what religion offers people is the ability to redeem themselves and you know may you know redeem their self-esteem and you know realize you know what i fucked up that does not mean that i am a horrible person that you know i i am being offered the chance for forgiveness through my my god whoever that god might be and i can use what i what i've learned what i've gone through and it's not going to weigh me down i'm going to become stronger i'm going to become a better person through both myself and the grace of god yeah, and and if a person is able to do that, more you know, hey, more power to them. That's exactly. Great. That's great that you found that and that you have that motivator to make you a better person. Doesn't mean that just being religious is going to be like, well, I'm I'm good. I can just ask for forgiveness and it'll it'll come. Yeah. Well, and we've talked about this before. Like, religion is not the sole drive of morality. No. You Cause, know, cause uh, oh, you were raised. Fact, yeah, you were yeah. raised non-religious, right? Yeah, I was raised completely non-religious. And, you know, I remember having to explain to my class, like, what we did on holidays and stuff like that. And I was like, it's the same thing that you do. We just don't talk about God. You know, I'd still like to give gifts. And, you know, in fact, you know, then the giving becomes even more important. (laughs) In my family, we also didn't do Santa Claus. So... We're just not big on imaginary figures in my family. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I also didn't have an imaginary friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but... Um, but, yeah, it, you know, to, to say, well, we want our kids to be moral, you know, I didn't need religion. I didn't need to have a fear of a God instilled in me to be a good person. And it's funny because I remember playing this game and it it was actually a board game. And so I I don't remember what it's called, but it's essentially like playing questions like when um, and I'm sure you guys have seen these in bookstores or whatever, you know, if books where it's like, if this happened, what would you do? Or, you know, they're they're meant to be conversation starters. And the question um, was about. Um, if you were at a payphone and something happened and, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of quarters started spilling out, what would you do? 
would you just pocket the money or would you actually do the right thing and, and contact somebody and hand it over? And this is when I worked at church camp. Yes, I was a non-religious person who worked at church camp. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> actually part of the reason I was hired to work at church camp. Oh, um, interesting. Because they recognized that, you know, it's a summer camp and yeah, kids are coming here because their parents want them to come here, but they're going to be at varying stages of, you know, their beliefs. So they wanted somebody who could, you know, better relate to those children. Yeah. Um, Makes and I was sense. the only person there who was like, I, I would turn it in. I would contact the phone company and turn the money over. It's not my money. It doesn't belong to me just because I came across it. Yeah. yeah, just because it all of a sudden, yeah, just because the PayPal started vomiting on you, all of a sudden <laughs> doesn't mean that it now belongs to you. Right. I mean, you know, and yes, I, I do think that there's a fundamental difference between like a quarter and, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of quarters, but only in the pure sense of like, if I lost a quarter, I don't need somebody to track me down and give it back to me. No. <laughs> like, seriously, just keep it. It's yours. It's going to cost both of us. You know, because yeah. time is money. You know, I spent twenty dollars in gas driving over, driving across town to give this to you. Right, I don't care anymore. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but then again, you know, like the hundreds and hundreds of quarters. Now, now, see, I, while you were talking about that question, I actually thought about it myself, and I'm like, you know what? I I probably, I would say ninety five percent sure that I would call somebody. And say, hey, you know, your phone is vomiting quarters over here. You know, I don't, I'm not going to run off with them. You guys, you know, you guys have that money. You know, you've earned it. And not to mention, you need to fix your damn phone. Yeah. I mean, of yeah. course, this is like when pay phones were still a thing. So, right. I mean, this yeah. is not an issue that people are going to have anymore. But, you know, this then did end up happening to me in a very real sort of way, which was I was in the mall one day and saw what I thought was a piece of costume jewelry on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I picked it up and looked at it and it didn't look real or anything. And just as a, we were about to leave the mall, I turned to my mom and I was like, no, I, this isn't right. No, we have to go to the lost and found yeah. and find out if somebody lost this. Right. And we go, and I don't remember what the security guy said, but it was not particularly trustworthy. Oh, <laughs> like I really didn't feel comfortable with it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I ended up taking it home and the next Sunday, so this is like a week later, um, there was an ad in the paper of somebody who had lost a, a diamond tennis bracelet in the mall. Uh, and by that time, my mom had cleaned it and that's when we discovered that it was in fact a real diamond tennis bracelet. Um, oh, wow. And we called the woman up and we were like, yeah, can you tell us where you lost it? Where do you think you lost it? What does it look like? Um, and she described it perfectly and came and picked it up and uh, gave me a reward of $100. So it's like, not only did I have the, you know, the satisfaction of knowing that I did the right thing, because, you know, I did turn around and I was like, no, I can't just take this. I, I, I have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then this woman turned around and said, you did do the right thing and thank you. And here's my way of thanking you. Yeah. Which, yeah. which works out well for everybody <laughs> yeah and it's like I, I didn't need to grow up in the church to know what was the right thing to do there right no yeah i actually had a similar situation when i was in high school um i was walking uh just through the halls like between classes or whatever and i saw just this pile of like ones i don't i didn't really count how many there were but it was probably like about maybe about ten dollars of ones it was like a you know a nice chunk of change and i was just picked up i was like well, somebody obviously lost this. So I just went straight to the, you know, the administrator, you know, the, the front desk and was like, somebody dropped a pile of ones. And they were like, oh, okay, well, uh, we'll just keep it in case anybody, you know, calls and reports it. And then it was like a, one class later, uh, like somebody from the, the school just came up to me and was just like, hey, uh, the, the, I can't remember who it was who lost it. But it was like the person who lost it uh, wants to thank you. And they thanked me. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And I was just like, "Yeah, you're welcome. No, no problem." Yeah, always, and, always good to so, do yeah, anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm not just saying that to pump myself up. I'm just saying I was not raised religious either. 
morality does not come from religion. It is not a product of it. It can be a, a happy side effect of it, but there yeah. can also be other side effects depending on how your religion is used. Oh, definitely. Uh, and and we've definitely covered both ends of the spectrum there. Like I said, the relative of mine who who, who found religion in prison and, and, and all of his horrible stuff, and then the two of you with no religious backgrounds, no religious upbringing, doing good things. Well, and, you know, like, the reason I had brought up the game was because, you know, I'd played it with people who were brought up in a religious environment, and I was the only person who would say, no, I would actually do something about this. Yeah. I, I'm actually kind of curious. What were? Do you remember remember what some of the other responses were? or? No, it was just basically that they would pocket the money. Oh, yeah. Because thou shalt not steal is definitely something they would ignore. Mm. Although, uh, I, I know I, I know my brain is going there. I don't know if I, ne I, I don't necessarily believe it this way but this is where my brain is logically going but is stealing if it's like yes that other thing and i know lo intellectually and logically i know yeah technically those coins would belong to the phone company so you technically would be stealing right no matter how you came by yeah. it it still didn't yeah. belong to you right and, and i'm sure that that's i mean because yeah there's definitely a big part of me that would like to be like well i could really use the money it would really be nice so yeah i think i'll just keep it yeah but then you know the other logical part of me kicks in and is like, first of all, it's not your money. It doesn't belong to you. And second of all, what in the hell am I going to do with that many quarters? Yeah. <laughs> that would be, that'd be a, it's actually gonna be a big of, Right. It's going to be a huge pain in the ass. So no, I, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. It's like I have a, I have a dice bag for a coin bag. It, it's only so big. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that along with all the other, you know, the other moral things, that would, that would be a good deterrent. You know, if nothing else, there are too many goddamn quarters. <laughs> I mean, even if it was only like twenty-five dollars a quarters, it's still a shitload of quarters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah, and I don't blame you on that one. Uh, I can't blame anybody, really. Oh lordy, so oh, and then <sighs> oh lordy, so so do we have anything we want to add to the two we've brought up so far, or? Or... Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think we pretty much covered both of these. Uh, oh, actually, I, I, um, it's sort of on the topic that we were uh, just just going on about. Um, a story that my dad told me years ago was he went to an ATM once and withdrew like forty bucks or something, and there was like an extra twenty dollars attached to it just because it got spit out, and he was just like, "Oh, well, that's not supposed to be there." So he like went up to the the bank and it's just like hey the atm gave me this uh you know extra twenty dollars i just want to give it back and they're like really mm -hmm. you, you you don't you don't want it you don't and then they like called somebody out over like and, and it was just like it was like this big deal it's just like really you, you seriously don't want it you, you don't want the extra 20 i mean why don't you take 10 why don't you take 10 because <laughs> <laughs> no, it was I, like and you said it was just the weirdest thing ever. He's just like, I'm trying to be responsible. I'm trying to, like, give you guys back your money that doesn't belong to me. And But, okay. And he, I, I think he said he took the 10 or, I don't know. My, my dad might have been exaggerating this. But. The way that you have to think about it is a bank is still a business. So they, you know, they're still also in the business of making money. So they can actually afford to give you money for turning money in. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, yeah. But I, that's one of those things where I would turn it in because, it, like, I don't want to find out later when it comes out of my account. Like, now I've just overdrafted my account because I took money that didn't belong to me and they figured out, you know, which transaction was the right one. Just like yeah. I, when I worked um, at a company years ago, they overpaid me by like $200. Mm -hmm. and, and I, sent an email to HR and I was like, what's going on here? And they tell me, well, you turned in a timesheet and you know, this is your overtime pay. And I said, I absolutely did not turn in a timesheet. And I turned to my manager and I was like, did you turn in a timesheet for me? Because I was salaried, but in Illinois, certain salaried positions are still eligible for overtime. Right. Yeah. So I only had to turn in a timesheet if I had overtime. Right. And I hadn't in probably like six months. And she said, nope. I did not turn in anything for you. And I had to contact HR two or three times to get my pay adjusted properly Damn. because 
I, you know, I didn't want to be shafted later on when they're like, well, but we paid you this money and we shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that actually reminds me of a news story I heard like years ago. Some guy, I want to say it was over in China or something. He, there was like a bank error and he either was able to withdraw more than what he had or they'd get, they'd moved the zero in the wrong place or what have you. And he ended up having more than what he initially had. And he at first went to the bank. He's like, hey, this is wrong. Bank's like, eh, it's yours now. Fuck it. You know? So he went. He, he went towards through like several small businesses trying to get them up off the ground. And then the bank realized their error and came back and bit him in the ass hard. I once, <laughs> I once paid my credit card off. Yeah. And it was $120. Right. And, and so I put it in there and you had to, you know, put the period and the zeros at the end for the change. Not that I know any human being who would ever, you know, pay change on their credit card bill, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I look at my bank statement a few days later and I'm getting overdraft notices because they withdrew $12,000 from my bank account. Oh, oops. Not 120, $12,000. And I was Jesus. like, I didn't owe that much money on my credit card. Why on earth would you think that I would overpay by 11,000, you know, yeah, by, by, by $120, at least... like, or $880, yeah, whatever by, the math is. Yeah, or, or at least 100 times over. Right. I was, times. Like, yeah. I was like, fuck. why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense. I actually had to write a pre- the president of Bank of America to have them reverse the charges. <laughs> and I was like, because, I was like, he, but you guys are a credit card company. Now you're not a credit card. You're just the people who own my money. Yeah. <laughs> because, because now I have a credit on my credit card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. oh lordy yeah but... i i think the lesson that that should be taken away from just all this is anything that might look like a happy accident is probably going to end up biting you in the ass so just try and take responsibility when that happens yeah. yes just be a moral person right yeah and you don't need religion it doesn't matter what 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 what's, what's his name again a jet what jim henry in tennessee says doesn't matter what anybody else says you don't need religion to have morals you seriously don't. You two are living proof of this. Right. On the yeah. on the other hand, you have corporations who are like, oops, you accidentally <laughs> gave us $12,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, oh, well. yeah, they don't have to pay for their mistakes. And in fact, if they're bailed out then and they're not bailed out enough, they'll go and try and sue the government, AIG. God. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't bail us out enough. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're whiny, entitled, crusty, old white fuckers. Yeah. yeah. And I don't care what the legal definition is. Corporations are not fucking people. Uh, yeah, I know. I just had to throw that out there randomly. So besides that, what we've learned this week, to, to kind of take a page from from uh, Nash here, what we've learned is that, that the uh, conservative Christians over in Colorado want to whitewash history even more than it already is. Although what I did learn recently, and I'm pretty sure I didn't learn in high school or could not have learned in high school, was that among the – I want to say the first people that rescued the uh, Jewish people out of the, out of the uh, uh, camp, concentration camps over in Germany or whatever were Japanese-Americans. Hmm. And, and in fact, I think I read it somewhere just today, and, and, and it's just you – know, and I've still got to verify it, which I have no reason to doubt it. But you always verify, you know, especially yeah. if you read it off of Tumblr. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. But um, but if it's true, then it's like, yeah, we are whitewashing even our more heroic moments. Apparently, only the white man can be heroic. Only the white American can be heroic, not a Japanese American who, who we yeah. also were putting into camps. And well, possibly never, forcing into the military. I was never taught about, you know, like the Buffalo Soldiers in World War Two. You know, just any, you know, moments where... You know, people of color in this country, you know, had, you know, a, a, a you know, had mo- had just mo- moments of those heroic moments. 
-hmm. that they, you know, they went out and did things. Yeah, I mean, I learned about the Japanese internment camps, but yeah, I never even, I never knew about this until you just mentioned it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, and I, I grew up in a fairly good school system that was pretty uh, straightforward about some of the, the, the nastier aspects of our history, but still, I mean, like, I didn't get a full education, and I'm still, to, just not to say that I, I have a full education now, but I didn't get a, a broader education on the the subjects until I was out of school, and that includes, like, college, you know, and just started researching stuff independently, and again, you gotta take everything you find on the internet with a grain of salt, but there's still, you know, a lot of stuff that's fairly empirically true. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, um, so yeah, um, to get back to what we what we learned this week, um, history does not need to be whitewashed anymore. In fact, we need to get some of that whitewash off and actually teach what's what actually happened as opposed to what the white man wants you to think happened. Because mm. you know it's white people. Yep. And we've also learned that just because you're religious doesn't necessarily mean you're a good person. Yeah. And and of course the the other side is true just because you're not religious doesn't mean you're a horrible person and it it works all the way around you know your actions right. deter, your actions you know you know what you show is what is is it determines whether or not you're a bad person or a good person right. which is like I, I i just have to say that i actually just uh remembered this the whole uh back and forth between bill maher and reza aslan has just been like mad. Oh my god! Okay, I, so for those of you who don't know, I actually know Reza. Uh oh. Really? Yeah, I I studied under Reza uh, as a, as a, an undergrad. Ooh, so, yeah. um, so in this this whole thing, like, I knew he was gonna have something to say about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, <sighs> oh. But yeah. It, First of all, like we're just gonna extend the show a little bit here because I have to talk about this. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Was Bill Maher always such a bigot? Did I just not realize it? I mean, he said more and more bigoted things over the last, you know, couple years. But was he always like this, or is he just actually getting worse? I <sighs> guess it, it has to be he's getting worse because I remember when I was like in high school and stuff, and he was doing real talk, and <laughs> you know, he's still doing real talk, obviously. But when you just got was getting it started, and it was just like. He was a really progressive person, and I listened to him very intently. And, I mean, he made a lot of blanket statements, but, you know, he made a lot of very good points. And just, I haven't really followed him or kept up on him, but just the statements he made about, you know, Islam, where it's just like how, you know, ISIS is, like, too close to Islam or, you know, it shares too many ideals with Islam. It's just like bull fucking shit right and like, so you know, thus like, all islamic people are bad because isis is bad yeah right. yeah and the taliban is bad and all of these other organizations it's just like it's just like what what reza said on on cnn it's just like do you know that there's seven islamic-led countries that have elected women as their heads of state yeah, yeah. i mean like come on like we haven't done that we just elected a person of color as president. Yeah. Like we have a ways to go as far as their, you know, their concern. But yeah, yeah. And, and here he's painting wildly different countries with the same brush. It's like, no, Saudi Arabia and Indonesia are not the same, not yeah. even remotely the same. So it's like just because they are both Muslim states doesn't. It's just, oh, and I felt bad for Ben Affleck being on Bill Maher's show because it's like, how do you confront such blatant ignorance? Yeah. Um, such blatant willful ignorance at that. It, it, you know, it's not that he doesn't have all the facts. It's that he chooses not to see them. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, that, that's the kind of willful ignorance. I just want to take my head and just run it through a plate glass window. Uh so and and like I couldn't have agreed more when Reza was like, you know, I say this in all serious. This is stupid. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, it, and then it, and then it's then really being ignorant. And the the anchor, I don't know what her name is, but she was like, Well, I thought you and Bill Maher were saying the same thing. I was like, Have you listened to a goddamn thing either of them have been saying? Oh. Wow. 
God. And then afterwards, they ran the whole, um, he's like, well, uh, he, he apologized for using the word stupid, and I think that that's because he recognizes that when, when, you, you, when you say something like that, it, it means you've lost the argument. I, uh, mm. Oh, I, God. No. No. But, <laughs> yeah, so on that, on that note, we're going to have to get out of here. I'm already hearing them, and, and I'm sure some of you are already hearing the kids running around, which means it's going to become chaotic. <laughs> so we're, we, but, but we got the hour out, so we're, yeah. we're good to go. So uh, right. if, if we wanted to find Gonzo Link on the interwebs and talk to him, where could we find him? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, and uh, Instagram now as Gonzo Link. Um, also part of the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. I'm part of Team Brotherhood's Bridge series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Abridged. And uh, I also have my own podcast that I host with Zenith Will Rule. It's called Focus on the Frames. It's a movie podcast. You can find it on focusontheframes.tumblr.com. No, Focus on the Frames podcast.tumblr.com and on Zenith's YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review. Sweet. And if we wanted to find Holly, which could we find her? You can find me all over the internet as Gookie Gox, G O O K Y G O X. Um, so that's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, pretty much anything that you would want to find me on. Except for Facebook, my fan book, it, or my, fa- <laughs> oh my god, I can't talk now. <laughs> my Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet! And you can find me on the interwebs, on Twitter, Tumblr, etc., at Gomer21XX. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And if you like these shows, you want to help support them, just head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And for as little as $1 per production, you could get access to a you know, monthly vlog. You get early access to all these videos and a few other things. I'm trying trying to work, work on things, and the chaos is already starting. So, uh, But I would be remiss if you're watching this on YouTube, then you see the wonderful title card artwork that is done by my girlfriend, the lovely Becky Hopkins. You can get her stuff over at patreon.com slash beckyhop. And for you know however much she has over there, if you pay her enough, she will also do a 30-second animation for you. And yes, she is an award-winning animator. I think this is the fastest I've ever done the Patreon promos. <laughs> 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 so with all of that said... This is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link, signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.